हेलो 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 अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी आय नु पखेर रागले नी हाउ चुनेशुम में वशमले ओ हाय गुजाइमस गुटन मॉर्गन प्रीवियस ओला बोंजोर कैफाल एंड अ वेरी अमेजिंग खुशामदीद टू एवरीबॉडी हुज ट्यून इन टू पीटी वर्ल्ड एंड वाच यू वर्ल्ड दिस मॉर्निंग अलोंगसाइड द वेरी अमेजिंग मरियम शहजाद एंड शहजाद खान हेलो मरियम हाउ आर यू टुडे अस्सलाम वालेकुम शहजाद एंड अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एंड आई एम डूइंग ग्रेट आई होप यू गाइस आर डूइंग वेरी वेल एंड यू आर रेडी टू स्टार्ट योर Wednesday morning with me with us it's quite chilly outside i hope you guys are keeping warm and uh, keeping keeping yourself indoor exactly and, and i think that's important too as well but other than that even if you feel like going outside please make sure that you keep yourselves warm too as well but as a matter of fact ladies and gentlemen it's time to rise and shine <laughs> wake and bake get up be focused and chase your dreams so whatever you have dreamt about last night please make sure that you follow your dreams as well well and for all those people who actually had an incident of uh, having a nightmare last night in his sleep go back to sleep <laughs> oh well i was just kidding but other than that ladies and gentlemen today we've got a very important topic to discuss it's about our work environment it is the place where we work and what happens over there but before we indulge in any other type of conversation which is related to our topic the top stories coming up let's see what's happening all around the globe good morning President Mamnoon Hussain and Prime Minister Shahid Khan Abbasi have strongly condemned the Quetta blast and directed to apprehend the terrorists. Prime Minister Shahid Khan Abbasi has said Pakistan can provide cooperation to Nigeria in various sectors including health, infrastructure, education and human resource management. Pakistan Muslim League N has won the by-elections of Punjab Assembly constituency PP20 Chakwal with a big margin of over 29000 votes. Congratulations PM Len. North and South Korea have agreed to hold military talks to defuse border tension after their first high-level meeting in 2 years. Traditional brand Bell Staff goes back to its British roots with the launch of new collection made in UK at London Fashion Week. And last but not the least, Danish scientists are developing algorithms that work with wearable sensors to allow 24/7 monitoring of abdominal cancer patients after surgery. High tech. Well these were the top stories ladies and gentlemen time now for a public service message and today we have decided that both of us are going to do the honors so let's go take a listen what do we have in the box for all of you All right Marie do you want to start Yes uh, our public message for today is about purpose what is our purpose in life what is what should we do what is our goal so what is purpose purpose is actually the sense of resolve and determination So what I I have a purpose of my life but I think everybody's purpose should be to please Allah and to make a be- better akhirah don't you think so Shazad I think that that's just superb but other than that ladies and gentlemen uh, obviously you know religion and then your life over here in this world But then world again we we no but we're in a journey that's why we why we are here is to make a better akhirah and the first thing we should do is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and exactly. then we can come go back to our worldly passions and compassions I think My purpose of life what I'm going to share is my purpose of life life is to actually dedicate myself into making Pakistan a state that it was meant to be a state a tolerant and a progressive idle state that speaks of freedom innovation peace and harmony wow. for all Well that's just great but then at the same time Mariam I think you should be dedicated towards being a good wife too as well <laughs> with your husband <laughs> sitting on your left hand side I think that can be a purpose <laughs> because my purpose in life ladies and gentlemen after serving Allah obviously I have to serve them and then anybody else but uh, as a matter of fact uh, I realized what my purpose in life was at least almost 5 years ago when i was working for another private channel and then when pt world was actually opening up i thought that you know this is what 
uh, everybody wants because we go out in 46 different countries. If you've got young people coming over here, all our news anchors, all our producers, if for one day you're going to get visit uh, to PTV World, you'll see that everybody, even the cameraman, even the makeup crews, everybody who works over the air are very young and vibrant people. And when we send this image to all parts of the country or probably the other world, I think this is where we're projecting the soft image. This is what my purpose is, and I'm trying to fulfill it. I think everybody's purpose should be to make everyone happy and, uh, to, you know, make yourself proud, make your parents proud, and do something which you actually want in life. Yeah, even if your parents do not uh, agree to that, for example, if you want to marry the same girl you love, Obviously, they're not going to be very proud of you, but if that's what you want, if that's what your purpose is That's actually is a very it. different topic. We shall be discussing that tomorrow, <laughs> but I think your purpose should be very meaningful in life. All right, that was a good beginning, but now, ladies and gentlemen, coming back to what we are going to discuss. So, ladies and gentlemen, what happens over here in Pakistan is that we do have quite a lot of laws in place. We do have a lot of policies within corporate organizations or even in, within the state organizations. We tend to follow them. But then, as a matter of fact, what we do is that we take advantage of people's needs. I think that's, that's how I'm going to put it, because of the fact that for all of those ladies or men who work within one organization, there are behavioral miscommunications. That's how I'm going to put it, because you do communicate with your behaviors and your attitudes, and half of them get unnoticed too as well. For example, if there's a wealthy boss, and he, I mean, this is going to be a very lame example, but this is how Pakistanis are going to understand. And that is that he might probably just hire a very good looking or a very pretty secretary. And all day long, all he does is probably harassment. And there can be different types of harassment as well. There can be body to body contact. There can be abusing. There can be lesser wages than men within one organization. So we're going to talk about all of these yes, things. Yes, but I don't think this only happens in Pakistan, what Shazad is trying to say. It happens all around the world. And we'll be talking about harassment at work. And we have some wonderful and apt guests with us who are going to, dis we're going to discuss this very important and very informative topic today. OK, but I've got one question before we get yeah. indulged in any conversation. And that is, so you're my wife, right? Mm -hmm. The world knows it now. So if I touch you at my workplace, is it harassment? I don't think so. Oh, all right, then that's fine. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, so, you know, to discuss all of these things, on my right-hand side, we have been joined by Ms. Humaira Hussain, who's a social activist. Hello, ma'am. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. Wa well, alaikum well, assalam. Well, thanks for inviting me. My pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us. Alongside Ms. Humaira Hussain, we have been joined by Executive Director of Asghar Khan Foundation. She's none other than Ms. Rashida Duhad. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Uh, very well, thank you. Thank you for having me on your show today. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. All right, so let's get started with the conversation. I think first things first, what is harassment? Harassment is basically intimidating someone right. with your gestures, and uh, it's uninvited. Right. You know, for instance, if you are really working and you're doing your job, but someone really wants some other favor which is not connected to the job, right. but uh, he or she is kind of, it is because of neutral and yeah. from any gender it can happen. Mm -hmm. So I think something uninvited, unwelcoming and uh, putting someone in a trauma where he or she cannot really perform his or her work is harassment. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I would just add, uh, agreeing with Humaira that uh, the, the basic definition is that when a individual is uh, unable to perform or feels stressed in the workplace, uh, then that, that uh, tends to be harassment. Uh, I think you, your question is very, very relevant, Shahzad, because uh, often we find as we go into activism on, on uh, harassment, there is a lot of uh, misunderstanding of what harassment actually yeah. is. Right. So if you send a, a SMS uh, message that is unwanted, is that harassment or, or not? It is harassment if the individual receiving the, the message, and in most cases it is women uh, who are harassed, uh, if, if they do not want to receive the message, if it's uninvited, right. mm -hmm. uh, and she has very clearly said, look, no, yeah. no means no. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that has to be now understood, uh, that that is harassment. Okay, so what is the difference between a harassment and conflict? And similarly, what is the difference between unprofessional and harassment? 
Okay, first of all, conflict. Conflict is about uh, in work environment yes. kind of disagreement. Mm -hmm. You know, we may have two different opinions, right, right. and when we are unable to bridge those opinions, then you know, kind of conflict may arise. Right. Yeah. So, conflict transformation, you know, conflict resolution may are the techniques basically, but we are not going into that. Uh, but uh, harassment is basically when with power, it is about misuse of power. You right. know, when you are really trying to tr uh, dominate someone with your power, with your authority. Uh, and uh, just like trying to fo enforce your own agenda, whatever it okay. is, we are not going into details, yeah. but that is. Yeah. And unprofessional is basically something, you know, beyond the boundaries. Mm -hmm. We must uh, really kind of uh, follow or respect right. ours and others' boundaries. Sure. We must not encroach. And uh, when we really start behaving something which is accord not according to the social norms, then it is kind of, you know, non-professional or unprofessional right. behaviors. All right, and this is what I wanted to ask you as well. I mean, so, so all, all of us over here in Pakistan, we quite a lot of time talk about mm. that, you know, there's harassment at workplace and whatnot. How does a very respectful work environment look like? Mm. Well, uh, let me give you an example, Shahzad. You know, when I was working in one place where there was a gentleman who was interested in, in a, a female colleague and uh, he sent a proposal of marriage which he refused yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, but he continued to show his um, interest yeah. Yeah. now uh, when we you know we have mechanisms of grievance etc you look at how to deal with it and when he was questioned on this and he said well I've done a very respectful thing I, I've sent a proposal of marriage yeah. Yeah. what's wrong in that uh, and th what was wrong was that, that, that the lady had refused okay. and uh, his continued interest even if it was not very uh, expressive right. it was there was this overt interest that was making her feel uh, uncomfortable, uncomfortable yeah. so I think a respectful uh, environment for me is where individuals men and women can work without feeling um, stressed or without feeling intimidated in any way right. and they are respected for their uh, professional contribution. Well, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but I think this is a very interesting question to ask, and that is, does harassment take place amongst the same gender too, or is it just always within the opposite genders? Same gender is it too. It can happen anywhere, actually. It has nothing to do with gender, I think. It is about the misuse of power and authority. At times when you really try to kind of bully someone or intimidate right. someone, so it may not take care of gender or anything. Yeah. You just want to enforce your own agenda with your own means, mm -hmm. and actually sure. this is. Wow. I, I, I would just adding to that. I think you know the within the patriarchal society, yeah. uh, clearly women don't have the same uh, level playing field. And, uh, you know, a lot of times when we work on gender or we work on women's rights, this issue always comes up right. that, well, even men are harassed. Well, of course, of they course. Are, you know, uh, but the because of a patriarchal society, the number of women harassed are far more uh, and women are far more vulnerable. Uh, and, uh, but you, we must remember that women are vulnerable to not only uh, sort of what you would call um, unwanted interest, they are also um, vulnerable to threat of more uh, violence. So, right, you know, right. the threat of rape, etc. So considering if, if a woman is, say, working in, in a studio, studio right. uh, has a night shift or something, mm -hmm. will be much more vulnerable than a man. So in that, because of the patriarchal society, because of the way these things are, women are much more vulnerable to harassment. So, so it's 2017 already and we still haven't got to a point where we can understand that harassment. Yeah, 2018. 2018 obviously, but we, we still haven't actually got to a point where we can understand that harassment is actually much more bigger than just sexual harassment. Yeah, yeah I would say okay, sexual harassment uh, is when it is against uh, two genders, you yeah. know, be because because there is a there is an overt sexualness in it. Uh, so you know, if you are harassing somebody by being unfair to the person, right. for example, okay. you know, that is not sexual harassment. Okay. But if if there is any level of sexual uh, orientation, yeah. like uh, having unwanted interest, physical contact, yeah. unwanted physical contact, etc., then that is what we call um, sexual harassment. Okay, right. so. so Please go ahead. Yes, so as you were telling that uh, there, are case, there are a lot of cases that women are being harassed and it is, a, it is a given that even in Pakistan or wherever, women are actually targeted, but so are men. And how can, can, can you tell, how can you prevent, take measures to prevent that? 
Uh, it, we, we have a law, we have a sexual harassment yes. and workplace law, uh, but uh, implementation as, as you rightly said is, is always a challenge yeah. and we have recently seen in uh, Aisha Gulalai's case mm -hmm. uh, that even the uh, national parliament did, had not implemented the law because the law requires a system of grievance. So if say uh, I believe I'm sexually harassed, uh, in every workplace you're required to have a committee to which I could go, I could give my, my you know, there is, there's a whole process yeah. that the law has, has defined. Uh, but implementation, so if the parliament doesn't implement it, uh, then one is very skeptical about how actually, how widely it is implemented. Uh, the organization I, I, I'm from, we have implemented, that we have these systems, etc. We went through training and it was quite interesting how unaware people were about what harassment and what the impact of harassment can be right. on, on female workers. All right, okay. Let's okay. Uh, I'd like to add, because harassment is a bigger phenomenon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sexual harassment is the worst kind of harassment, actually. So yes, these are the things. And secondly, I'd like to add to Rashida's point. Uh, yes, we have law. Implementation is an issue. But I think uh, initially, when the law was kind of uh, in the phase of, you know, before passing the law, there was a long, long movement. <sighs> You know, from the civil society, and right. then there was alliance against sexual harassment, uh, and uh, you know, a number of organizations became the members. And then, just like when the law was passed, uh, then uh, basically all the measures were trying to be taken that organizations may adopt this, uh, you know, kind of uh, compliance system that uh, the phenomenon of harassment is discouraged. So, code of conduct was kind of printed and right. it was largely circulated by the civil society and it really explains all those steps that an organization can take right. because it is about something uh, you know talking about the taboo okay. so I think when harassment happens and someone really comes up with a complaint so it can be kept confidential it is not that organization has to be kind of getting some stigma so the process is kind of in a way that you must have a committee that is known to everyone in the organization one okay. uh, number two uh, uh, then there is some authority right. uh, to whom this uh, um, the committee will really present the inquiry. Right. So, you know, some decision maker or really powerful person can take, look into and can take some action. And number three is basically if someone is really not satisfied with the inquiry committee's decision, things can be taken to the ombudsman. Ombudsman. Yeah. And even if someone is not satisfied with the ombudsman, then it can taken further to the president or the prime minister. So, I think basically this is all about the law. Right. And uh, law is there, very much there. A number number of organization I remember years back it was around 300 organization all at once you know that came into signing yeah. that code of conduct and the code of conduct I, I have uh, visited number of organizations they have displayed at a prominent place in their own organization so every visitor can have a look mm -hmm. and the second point is it is not about uh, that uh, if I am just a client of some uh, a business or some enterprise or some organization and someone from their real harasses me uh, I cannot take it I can take it and even the onus is on the organization because yeah. the employee of that organization is doing that exactly uh, but uh, very amazing points and ladies and gentlemen since we were talking about federal ombudsman too as well would they give you the earliest possible solution which which is over there but I think that ombudsman is just for the uh, government sector employees too as well these are the people who can actually file against the other federal uh, probably employees who are out there but as a matter of fact I'm sorry and I'm responsible, well, I, I'm definitely responsible for my own views and my own perspectives. But yesterday, you know, we had statements came out uh, by the Chief Justice of Pakistan as well, very respectable. And I do respect his opinion too that we do not have competent people within the, you know, judiciary system. And the statements went like a fire in the jungle too as well. So now, having those problems, don't you think that, you know, to come down to a point where we have to alleviate or where we have to educate people about harassment is going to take us much more longer than where we are today. Absolutely, Shazad. An unfortunate reality is that despite the law and the systems, problems of implementation, even where it is implemented, you find a lot of um, uh, people who are aggrieved do not get justice. Yeah. You know? Uh, and what is amazing, uh, often I have seen cases where if uh, the aggrieved is a, is a young, good-looking woman, yeah. uh, you find the whole society will, uh, will, will uh, you know, sort of rally against her. Okay. Oh, she asked for it, right. uh, you know, uh, she was really 
so whatever uh, she, you know, she she wanted to uh, she wanted to get ahead she was using her showing, looks uh, etc yes. uh, and uh, that uh, you know the, the shaming the victim uh, and blaming the the survivor is is very very common yeah. and i think it takes a lot of guts uh, for uh, the aggrieved to come up and fight a case uh, and, and um, unfortunately even society let alone the actual legal system uh, tends to uh, and even uh, I mean I'm sorry to cite uh, Aisha Gulalai's case uh, when she came up with her allegations uh, even her sister was dragged into the whole thing uh, and, and the kind of comments that were made on the sister on herself uh, you know, there was no no due process. Yeah. So even even if you have a competent uh, uh, legal system, right. uh, I I think totally you know you you have to look at society. And the amendments need to be made because I think uh, at the earliest nineteenth century that that's the time when we actually adopted the judiciary system. Until now, you know, it's the same. There are no further yeah. amendments being made. But as a matter of fact, before we move on towards our break, Marie very correctly said at the start of the show that it's happening all around the world. You know, that Oscar jury guy, you know, and then, you know, now when the awards actually took place, everybody gave out speeches too as well. So if it's a global phenomenon, why should we be so worried about it? <laughs> if it is the global phenomena, it shall not really be spread like that. I think the bad things shall be really dealt with. Obviously. And this is a menace. Well, this I'm is sorry not something that I'm being a, a scapegoat, but it's for all those people out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, you know, the real point is if something uh, is really bringing implications to somebody's physical health, psychological health, and even the social Mental movement. Health. So, I think one must be really very careful about it right. and it has to be dealt with. And uh, yeah, I, I think this is really a sort of a tipping point, as I yeah. see, the kind of global attention uh, one is getting on, on this uh, whole phenomena. Uh, is a very positive thing. I, I think I, I think most of us have watched Oprah Winfrey's uh, speech, very very stirring uh, speech that she made uh, on that thing. And this whole, uh, uh, you know, they did the campaign on the global campaign on right. Me Too, okay. uh, sort of brought home to the 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 whole. Uh, scale of this menace, okay. uh, you know, how many people are there. I think one must also, uh, while there may be male survivors, what is also important is male sympathizers and yeah. people who right. understand and are sympathetic. Uh, that is where change will really happen, where you have both women and men being, uh, you know, understanding of the phenomenon. Oprah even made a speech about it too as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but that's great, ladies and gentlemen. And now we've got a small video to share with you guys. And I think we are going to let you exactly know what harassment is. So let's go ahead, watch this video, and then when you guys are going to come back, obviously we are still in conversation. <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry, let's see how do we deal with it. And harassment. But what does it mean for you and your workplace? This video explains what workplace bullying and harassment is and what it's not. Legal obligations for employers, supervisors, and workers, and where to get the information you need. So first off, what is workplace bullying and harassment? It includes any inappropriate conduct or comment by a person towards a worker that the person knew or reasonably ought to have known would cause that worker to be humiliated or intimidated. Examples could be yelling or name-calling, vandalizing personal belongings, harmful hazing or initiation practices. There might be a single perpetrator or a group. There may be just one target or many. Bullying and harassment can occur between co-workers or between the employer and a worker or it can come from external sources, such as members of the public, clients and customers, or workers from other organizations. Bullying and harassment also extends to online activities. Cyberbullying can occur through email, text messages, social networks and other websites. What is not considered workplace bullying and harassment? Managers and supervisors have many responsibilities. Decisions relating to job duties, workloads, 
deadlines, and performance management, or the direction of workers and the workplace are not bullying and harassment. So what are your legal duties? Employers have an obligation to take reasonable steps to prevent bullying and harassment, or minimize it where possible. Employers must also develop a policy statement that addresses bullying and harassment in the workplace. Develop and implement procedures for reporting incidents or complaints and for how they will be dealt with. They also have to train supervisors and workers. Supervisors and workers are required to comply with the employer's policies and procedures and not engage in workplace bullying and harassment. Workers must report it when they see it or experience it. The bottom line is, bullying and harassment is a workplace hazard that poses a risk to the health and safety of workers. So bullying and harassment, ladies and gentlemen, is a workplace hazard. Please make sure that you do not exhibit such characteristics within your personality that somebody actually feels indemitated just because of the fact that you aren't good to be around with. So please make sure that you are not one of those people. Be very happy and be very positive. And now coming back to the point where I left, and that was, so it, it's almost a year ago. It was in 2017, very rightfully. And uh, so what happened was uh, there was this one lady. And uh, she was talking about all of the laws in place and how we can go and fight within the courts and the judicial system. And she didn't speak about it on the show. While, you know, we were at the backstage and then we were talking. So she said that, you know, two, twice or thrice in her life, harassment took place. And she couldn't take up the case because she thought that, what if they fire me? I'm not even going to find another job. So how do you think that we are going to create an example because it's going to be very difficult because those people, uh, you know, they get stigmatized too as well and they become an example of not to filing the case. Hmm. So what do we do about it? I think uh, first of all, more awareness, wants to talk about more awareness. It. When system is really victim friendly, things will really come up. First okay. of all, uh, there is the issue that pat patriarchy, as uh, Rajta mentioned earlier, is the biggest challenge. Even, you know, for women to decide to work is basically a big thing. One, mm -hmm. you, you know, the barriers start from home. Mm -hmm. yeah. So social constraints are the first thing. Yeah. And then, you know, the friendly environment. And third, the friendly system. Okay. Okay. So I think we need constant uh, awareness about it. And sensitization is the real thing. Right. Because yeah. we have to be really sensitive to the rights of the, the uh, other people. Uh, you, I am not saying that others shall not be really sensitive to the duties, but yeah. about the rights is the right. first thing one. Uh, number two, I think uh, it is about the personal choice. Right. Because what we really talk about is, uh, in, in, especially in these cases, tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Reported cases are always at the tip of the iceberg. They are not the real magnitude right. or the issue, you know, uh, the real issue. So I think it is all about, first of all, awareness, then the change in system, and third, because implementation, as we have earlier discussed, is an issue, because we are still uh, unable to really uh, place the ombudsman yeah. uh, for this very particular law. And uh, I think uh, by implementing, by putting all the right resources at the right places may really help. Uh, I think the law is, is very important. And, and uh, the efforts made, like these shows, uh, you know, to try to see how the law can be implemented, it gives you some recourse. But uh, clearly the issue is so large. We are, I'm also a woman in a working place. Right. I, if you ask me, of course we have been har harassed. So I, w I also put in me too. You know, unwanted attention, unwanted, uninvited uh, attention, uh, even things like, uh, oh, you're looking very pretty today. Nothing wrong with a compliment. Yeah. But if there is a sexual annotation to it, that is not, not uh, you know, so. And, and we're not kids, you know. Everybody does understand that what, you, what somebody's actually trying to tell you because half of the time we do read in between the lines. And Absolutely. it's not necessary that you have to say it on somebody's face. You get a gesture and you know uh, what's happening, no? Yeah. Right. So I want to take this moment and I want to, uh, because I really like PTV and it's a great platform to create awareness and I want to, you know, put this forward and I want to ask them again. I, although they've, they've already answered this question, but I want to ask them again that as a woman, we do have laws under Pakistani law and how does that protect us, the harassment law? And what are my rights under the Pakistani law? 
uh, the Pakistani law on sexual uh, harassment in workplaces, uh, it uh, stipulates a system in each workplace of what needs to be put in place. So, right. for, for example, uh, every organization must train their staff to understand what sexual harassment right. is. Right. Uh, every organization is required to put in a committee, which is a grievance committee, and people must know that uh, if there is any grievance, they can go to this committee. Right. Uh, you don't need, it, it can be the, the complaint can be written or even verbal. If you're too intimidated to put in the written complaint, you can, you can go. And uh, as Humera explained, if you are dissatisfied with uh, the response you get, then you uh, approach, uh, you, you have the option of approaching the external right. person. But do uh, verbal remarks as constitute as uh, harassment also? If it is making you feel intimidated, right. you know, okay. if there is, a, I mean, for example, uh, my right. example is, if somebody says you're looking pretty, nothing wrong with it, yeah, uh, or you're looking, you know, if I, for example, I can say to Shazad, I, I like your tie, you right. know, right. Uh, so <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> but if there is a sexual annotation to it, right. if there is a, uh, you know, reading between the lines sort of message, a hidden sort of agenda, which people pick up, pick you up, know, obviously. people will pick up. And if it makes them feel uncomfortable, and right. uh, you know, okay, once, if it happens once and you feel, okay, okay this is just an uh, abrasive, uh, you know, a deviant behavior, you let it pass. But it happens again, and you are unable to do your work right. because you feel intimidated uh, in, in the presence of this person, that that is sexual harassment. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I want to add it. Uh, one thing is basically, it is not, uh, uh, one step one is basically about taking it to the committee or yeah. just like the start of the organization right. of the process. The second thing is about the punishment then. You know, once you really tackle the issue and there is real the punishment to someone who really proves guilty, right. you know, yeah. of harassment, then I think it really creates kind of, con uh, it gives confidence to right. the victim and to the star uh, colleagues okay. working over there. And such messages really spread. Okay. You know, once it happens, something we have good uh, examples to share with people, then definitely uh, uh, there is some kind of discouragement automatically that comes to the harasser. I'm not saying that it will eradicate, but it will definitely minimize the situation. But so we can look women at don't tend to actually go up and file a complaint because yeah. they're just too too scared to do it. Even men, I mean, yeah. consider but everyone. Yeah. I think it is just because, uh, just like in 2010, we passed this law. See, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's the society is basically centuries old and the phenomena is again centuries old. So I think bringing it to the agenda and taking up that agenda at different forums, right from the domestic front to the international front, I think this is the achievement. Well, I mean, right. We can look at Harvey and Weinstein's case. Yeah. Exactly he that's has right. lost a lot. So when, when uh, something like this comes up and people know that they have stand to lose a lot, one hopes that it would uh, deter. I mean, of course, one <laughs> hopes that they would become better people. I mean, that is great. <laughs> but you know, people have actually found a way to go around things. And, yeah, uh, and this is what we do. Jugaad jisko Yeah, exactly. So what they do is, for example, if there's somebody, you know, who looks very pretty and amazing, and if there's another colleague and they'll go, oh, you look very hot. And if the expression, which which comes back is not very amazing they'll be like oh jk just yeah. kidding <laughs> lol laugh out loud so you know this is how they suppress that yeah. entire harassment so but now coming back to a point where i I'm, I'm glad that ptv world is always very inclusive and we're not only talking about women we're talking about men, men too also, as well yeah. is harassment any difference when it happens to a man I think victim is a victim. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm not putting it in a very right case that women are more kind of victims and then men. Well, women are uh, more vulnerable. More this is vulnerable. Decided, That's what we are. Yeah. We have agreed to that basically. Yeah. That's the baseline actually in society and uh, workplace and rights and even you know discrimination even in terms of it is come. But when we really talk about harassment, when it comes to someone, uh, it is irrespective of gender. I think. Right. Yeah. And victim is always a victim. And sorry, I like to respond to your previous point about the law okay. and its implementation. It is not about uh, merely about the law of harassment that people are really kind of uh, restrictive of using it or they okay. are kind of shy to use it. I think our system is not really friendly and even in number of cases people don't want to proceed with the system. Right. For instance in robbery at times people say that oh my god it will be so difficult to deal with the system to stay quiet if loss is not that great. Yeah. So I think it is about overall system and then this law is pa the part of that system. But, but what, now, if, uh, yeah. what if we don't have a witness that would claim that, uh, that this particular person has been harassed? 
passed. So would, would this case still be put forward? Because we do need a witness. Yes. Uh, that is different, I think. Uh, no, no, for sure. For, I, I think there's no, a even if, if I'm filing, a, let's, let's say yeah. if I'm filing a complaint and I don't have a witness to... Uh, oh, you don't have evidence. I, evidence. I don't have evidence. Yeah. So yeah. Would, would, would it be uh, effective? Uh, that, that, that applies to all cases, right? So okay. uh, proving is obviously a, a oh, problem. I, I think the most... Uh, uh, cumbersome issue is that the onus of proof falls on the on the oh, survivor, yeah. you know. Yeah. Right. So they they are uh, asked to prove uh, things. Now I, I think one must also put in a caveat that it is very important not to misuse the law. Right. Uh, so if you have fake uh, allegations or anything, mm. that that also creates a, a real uh, you know sort of uh, it pushes us, us back because then you one fake allegation and they say oh it's always like that it's really there was really nothing, it, it was you really know. nothing yeah. so so that is also a reality we have to deal with uh, in, in and i would definitely come back to a point where i actually want to ask that half of the time or probably you know you do not have an intention to harass anyone but the other person might feel that you know it, it was intimidating mm -hmm. so then how, how to prove yourself that you're not guilty first of all this is what i want to talk about but second You've got a small clip and it actually exhibits that if somebody is harassing you, this is how harassment takes place. Go ahead, take a look. When you guys are going to come back, I'll get this answer for you guys. Yeah, thank you. I uh, can't find the McGinnis file. I keep losing it. I mean, I don't know. Is, is it me? No, I don't know. Hold on. Don't be silly. Oh, that's weird. Right? It just it keeps disappearing. Okay, hold on, we're gonna find it. Just give me one second. Starving. Haven't eaten since lunch. Ah, here it is. Where? I'm just gonna drag it to your desktop for now. What? It was in the damages file. It didn't have its own file like the rest of the families in the lawsuit. But I'm just gonna organize this tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That, that would be great. Yeah. You're, you're amazing. Oh, that's my job. Oh, really, you're, you're very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, if you're done, I'm going to get going. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where are you headed? No, we're just home. Well, I'll, I'll take you. Oh, my goodness, no, don't be silly. No, 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 it's no problem. I'm, I'm out of here. No, 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 it's fine. It's no, I'll drop like, you. I'm four it's stops not... away in the queue. I'm like, I'm really fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't... I mean, you don't you don't get bothered on the train? No, I just I listen. I put in my headphones and I listen to my music and then. Nice. Yeah, I just go in my own little world. It kind of clears my head. It's nice. That actually, you know what? That sounds really nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should probably join you on the train. You know, clear my head. <laughs> get one of those splitters. You know, headphones. Oh yeah. So you're um. I mean, you're you're happy here. Everything good. I mean, you're, you're oh, happy wow. here? Yeah, yeah, for I'm sure, good. yeah. It's been, I've been great. I mean, you're comfortable? Everyone treating you right? Yeah, everybody's been just great. I mean, like, I feel really lucky to be here, good. so, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm really glad we chose you. Me too. I mean, even though, I mean, there was, there was, you know, a contingency that were like, you know, they wanted someone older with more experience. It's a big responsibility. Oh, it's huge. I know, it's huge. You know, and the salary. Oh, my God, yes. I right. mean, like, I was literally, I was about to move in with my parents, and <laughs> right before, the, yeah, so this saved me, so, yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> no, I just, I just want you to know that I, I really believe in you, you know? Thank you, it's nice to hear that from someone. <laughs> These are cool. Did you just, I was just trying to show you how much I appreciate you, you know? I do. Uh, yeah. Um, I do, I really do. I, I just don't know if I'm... Comfortable. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm um, sorry. It's okay. No, no, I, I don't. I don't want to make you uncomfortable. No, I, no I that's not my style. I know, it's, and it's fine. So I'm no, gonna. No, I can just, see. I can, I can see it's not fine. You're not. You're not fine. Um, Listen, I want things to be comfortable between us. No, okay. It's, it's okay. No, I, I feel I it's not. I feel it's not okay, and I'm. I, I really am sorry. I want to make it okay. 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 Just okay. are we? Are we good? We're. Nothing happened. No, Nothing happened, no, it, all right? It yeah. was, I was showing, you know what it was? I just want to show you how much, how great you are, how good, how good you are. Thank you, okay. And that's all, okay? We're good, yeah. we're friends, friends.
He's yeah. Good. He's just good. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So this was one clip, and obviously we we had to play a censored clip too as well. But this is how it happens usually at workplace as well, and this is not just the only type of harassment as well. But now coming back to a point where I wanted to ask that you're not guilty. Somebody is actually falsely uh, have had an allegation on you. What do you do about that? Because in Pakistan over here, it's very difficult. to defend yourself against a woman if you have a committee at a workplace. Because okay. they just don't listen then. You yeah. know, if you have said something to a lady, out. Yeah, but I think committee is uh, about a trained committee who knows at least certain facts that how to investigate the matter. It is not that um, the marketplace that someone is really throwing something and without, you know, just like uh, investigating, you are just trying to beat that. So, and uh, first of all, that this is a process. It is not about the single thing. And uh, secondly, as we have already mentioned, the onus uh, comes to the victim or the survivor at times. And though in the real cases, sometimes the victim really suffers more through this type of things. But uh, committee is always uh, more trained, and uh, they do have the kind of trainings and uh, that to investigate and to look into the matter m- more on factual basis right. rather than kind of. Yeah. Ms. Dodd, uh, what do you think yeah. is the role of management? Because we're running out of time too. I think you know openness in communication is so important, and that is important overall. for a good team to function uh and uh, you know to invest in human resource on what open communication is what is assertive behavior uh, to tr- understand what is aggressive behavior what is passive behavior now the clip that you showed uh the 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 lady seemed uh, very intimidated yeah. but her behavior is very passive yeah. uh if uh, there was more assertiveness she w- should have stopped this long time ago to say okay. look you're making me feel uncomfortable back off you know yeah. so i think uh, uh, along with the law and even understanding uh, harassment there is a, a genuine need to uh, invest in uh, communications training team building understanding right. how you respect each other uh you know assertiveness for for us is how, where a person respects oneself and the other okay. yeah. and in this case she right. uh, the clip is uh, that she is intimidated probably not even but respecting herself but in the, in the clip she did say no but he kept yeah. on going on he and kept on going. even if if a person if a girl if a woman says no but the person keeps on going on the, the only option she's left with is to quit or to you know leave the job unfortunately you know that is the case uh, and, and often people are, there is a lot of miscarriage of justice uh, and and you find that people don't get justice in these cases yeah. uh, and uh, uh, you know i'm sure there are males who are uh, Uh, affected by fake allegations but they often we find that uh, survivors who uh, have been aggrieved do not get justice and right. are are have eventually left uh, their organizations so what what uh, what should the organization the organizations then can take some actions against these probability to prevent these probability of harassment the, you know uh, definitely uh, understanding what harassment is right. uh, you know and, and then as i said uh when there is investment in uh, team building in communications in understanding how you respect each other as professionals right. uh, that investment is very important yeah, then don't you think that for all of those people who are willingly in a relationship at a working place should actually make sure that their relationship stay at home and they come as professionals to workplace because then i think other people might feel to to be in a relationship too as well seeing two love birds roaming around in a workplace i think they'll be like oh my god man we are the only ones left out so uh, don't you think that we need to do that we we need to be professional i uh, can yes. i be can i be daring enough to disagree with you sure, because sure, sure. i think concession uh, relationships are not not nothing there's nothing bad in it and uh, you know um, your research shows that people spend much more time at workplaces so developing relationships is quite natural right uh, and we see you husband and wife sitting here <laughs> <laughs> also so i think there's nothing wrong with cons- consensual uh, relationship yes. nothing wrong with that well maybe right yeah yeah i agree with that that is not harassment harassment is where someone really tries to intrude uh, you know someone's yeah. boundaries right. so one thing but, yeah, but it, it, and the second relationships point, the only issue we have is that uh, you have to uh, just take care of conflict of interest you yes. know so there should not be any any uh, reporting lines uh, thank you very much thank lovely. you very much for being with us it was lovely to okay, have yeah. you guys on the show thank you so much and we'll definitely get you back on the show too as well but as a matter of fact ladies and gentlemen the previous organization we used to work in if they would actually find out that there was somebody harassing or you know if was if there was somebody actually interested in to some somebody else 
they will actually get them married too as well. <laughs> so your life is a living hell. I mean, but as a matter of fact, whichever job you're applying for, please make sure that you, they have a policy in place about bullying and harassment. Read them. And because everybody has this policy book or a note which is right on, you know, uh, what do we call it? Yeah? It, it's a board which is actually held anywhere. So wherever it is, just please make sure that you read about it. You should know about the policies of your office too as well. But if there's anything, and if you want any help from PTU World or World This Morning, please write to us on our Facebook fan page, which is with the name of? World This Morning. On Twitter. World This Morning without a G. Or Daily Motion and YouTube. World This Morning. And the fabulous repeat's going to be at? 11 or 5 p.m. Till the next time, look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning. Thank you very much.